now that we have seen the models that we are going to use let's get into it so i'm going to create a folder for each model and let me begin with the category model and let's create one file called category.js and you can use lowercase or uppercase and the model is like a class in javascript and for classes we often use uppercase for the first letter meaning that we are going to create instance from that object or class so let's go ahead and then create our model so first step is that we need to have the schema and from there we need to compile the schema to form the model so first step is that let's require the mongoose well we forgot to install mongoose so let's go ahead and install mongoose as npmi mongoose and let me clear it and run the server as that so let's require the mongoose here and let's go ahead and create the schema so here as const category schema is equal to new mongoose dot schema make sure to use uppercase s and then inside we're gonna provide the blueprint so here i'm gonna have what is called category name and for this is going to be of type of string uppercase s and then provide this validation as required set to true all right so we are done with the first one and let me duplicate for the description so here as description for the category is of type string and for description required is going to be false or i can even remove it entirely and for the category we want to know the number of posts that belongs to a category so we're going to have a field for the post and we're going to use an array of the post and for this we're going to save the ids of the post but not the actual post and for this mongoose gives us a special type called mongoose.schema.types.objectid meaning that we want to save the ids of the post the next property is going to be ref meaning reference meaning that which model are we referencing and we are referencing the post model and we will get there very soon and the next one is going to be the author or the creator of this category let me add comma here meaning that a category will belong to a single user therefore i'm going to remove the array and for this i'm going to reference the user model and we are going to create this one also and as a second argument to this schema we are going to provide timestamps and we are going to set to true this one will give us the date the post will be created and the date this post will be updated automatically so that is it for that so let's go ahead and compile this to form a model so here i will say module dot export is equal to mongoose dot model and here we are going to specify two arguments the first one is going to be the category or the name of our collection and then second argument is going to be the category schema but in our mongodb account or dashboard mongodb is going to convert this one to lowercase and then add s to it now that we have the category we can require this in any part of our application to create the category in case this syntax looks confusing what we can do is that i can assign 
const and I will say category is equal to that. And then down here, I'm going to export as category. This one is the same as before. All right. So let's go ahead and create the rest. So the next model is going to be comment. And to make our life easier, I'm going to paste the comment and I'll explain them for you. And definitely I'll provide the starter code or the code for you. So here it follows the same principles as we have done. We bring in new the mongoose and these are the properties about the comment. A comment will have the content and then it is a required field and the creator for the comment. And here we are referencing the user model. Don't worry, we're going to create it very soon. And then we are using a special type called object ID because we don't want to save the entire object, but instead the IDs of the user. And this one improves experience for our application. And then the post, meaning that the post that we are commenting and then the timestamps as I have already explained, and then we compile to form the comment model. And the next one is going to be the earnings. So let me collapse this and then create one for the earning. And then I'm going to paste that. So let's see the properties. We have the user, meaning that the user that we are going to associate the earning to. And then the post that the earning will also belong, the amount, and then the date that's going to be calculated on, and then the timestamp. And down here, we compile to form the model as earnings. And I forgot to tell you that we're going to have a model for notifications. For the meantime, don't worry. When we get there, I will show you how we are going to implement that. Remember that we are developing the application feature by feature. So let's look at the notification schema or model. We have the user ID and then the post, the message, and then is read. Don't worry, when we get to that feature, I'll explain how this one works. For the meantime, understand that we have notification model. And the next one is going to be payment. And let me paste that. And let's look at the properties. We have the user that's making the payment, payment reference, currency, status, and then subscription plan and the amount the user is paying and then the monthly request count. For this one, we don't need it, so let's remove this. And then down here, we compile to form the model. And let's go ahead and create one for the plan. And then paste that and here the plan name, either premium or free or VIP. And the features for that plan, limitations, the price, and then here we compile to form the model. And let's go ahead and create one for post. And let me paste that. And for the post, we have the content and then the image. For the image, let me remove everything from here. And I'm just going to use a type of object. Over here, we are going to save instance of the images that we are going to create inside Cloudinary and save it inside our database. Don't worry, when we get to file upload, I will explain this one one more time and the author for the post. And then next earning date. Once again, when you get to this feature, I will explain this. And this month earning, total earnings, the category of the post, and then views count. Likes, here we are referencing the user, dislikes, and then viewers, and then the comments, and then is blocked. Once again, since we are going to develop this project feature by feature, don't worry, 
I will re-explain this one also. And the next one is going to be the profanity. So here as profanity and then paste that. Here we have bound words. And lastly, for the user. So here as user and then create the file as user.js and let me paste the code. Again, I will provide all this code for you. Let me remove the crypto. When we get to the features, I will explain. Here we need the username, profile picture, email, password, Google ID. Remember, we are going to use OAuth and that is Google sign in or social sign in. Again, I will explain when you get to authentication part of it. And then the authentication method, either Google, Looker, Facebook, or GitHub. And then password reset token, account verification token, account verification expires, account verification token, and then expires, password reset, the number of posts, total earnings, and next earning date, plan is email verify, payment has selected a plan, and then last login, followers, and following. One more time, as we move on, by adding these features, we will come back and re-explain all these properties. So the next step is that let's compile the user to form the model as model, pass in the user, and then comma, user schema, and let's go ahead and export module.export is equal to user. At this point, I believe you are confused, but trust me, since you are going to use feature by feature approach, we are going to move step by step.